We are here at Converge 2022, probably the most anticipated event here in person in Austin this year and every year at Converge is the Capture the Flag, uh, also known as the CTF. This is a mysterious event. Many people don't know, uh, really don't know about it. It's not on their radar while their executives having meetings and their own special time secret meetings. This is the secret meeting for the technical people. Some of the best and brightest that attend Converge look forward to the Capture the Flag event every year. So today you will get to meet the mastermind behind the challenges that have stumped and plagued teams for the last several years. And you'll get to learn a little bit about how this event comes to pass, how the challenges are created, and who they're created for, and who, who are these people that participate in the CTF. So today I am interviewing uh, quite literally the mastermind behind the CTF. This is the man who creates the challenges and runs the event. I'm not going to share his name to protect his identity. So thank you for joining us today. And I'd like to begin with maybe just uh, tell us very broadly about maybe your background. How did you uh, come into this uh, role of being able to create these games? <laughs> so I've created a training for many, many years. It allowed me to understand and appreciate how important it is to have a two-way communication. So you have an attendee and then you have a trainer. And what I found over the years is that with training, it's just limited to that specific time. So for instance, you start at nine o'clock and you end at five o'clock and there's not much interaction thereafter. I quickly realized that there's an opportunity here to create you know, gamify training. So back in 2019, created the first Capture the Flag at Converge. And since then we've had one every year. And so in some cases we've had them multiple times um, during the years. So the gamification component allows participants to immerse themselves and the people that participate have a certain personality which allows them to you know solve these challenging puzzles with certain time restrictions and learn different skill sets so that includes you know, digital forensics, incident response, threat hunting, memory analysis, PCAP analysis. Uh, for those who have seen the letter CTF and they're always wondering what is that? Uh, when they see the Converge registration and they just skip over, they don't know what it is. How would you define what is CTF? A CTF is just a immersive way to learn a specific subject. So in this case, we're looking at digital forensics and instant response. And it's a way for you to learn about, um, you know, digital forensics and instant response in a gamified manner. So you have different puzzles and then you have to try and solve them to move on to the next one, move on to the next one, etc. There's a scoreboard, so you can then see ah, you, you know, how you've done compared to your, your peers and people that work in the industry in different verticals, etc. You can compare and contrast. So do people, this is like a sport almost, maybe almost an, the, the Converge Olympics, so to speak. So is this an individual sport or a team sport? So it can be an individual sport, but the way I've designed it is that it's a team sport. Okay. So we have four individuals per team. 
-hmm. With a time restriction, typically about two hours, sorry, four hours. There are four hours to solve as many puzzles as they, as they can. And the team that manages to solve the most puzzles will win. Now, I have done some of these in the past uh, with our own <clears throat> Tanium internal events. And I know that there's, the way the challenges are structured, there's many different types. Could you talk about the different types of challenges? Because I think that really helps how you structure your team as you want to have people and skill sets that would address these. So what are the different types of challenges? So the ones we had at Converge uh, included spear phishing intrusion, uh, supply chain attack uh, scenarios, so spear phishing on Windows, so you have to figure out you know, what was the initial infection, extract information from you know, PowerShell transcription logs to work out what was the initial infection, decode that. The supply chain attack one uh, is related to uh, Mac OS. Another one is related to red team assessment on, on Linux. We had some PCAP analysis, memory analysis. So it's a myriad of different uh, skill sets. So one is not pigeonholed to do, you know, this is related to just Windows or Linux or Mac or is very varied and we have people that have never done a capture the flag for many years now. They've never participated in a CTF and they participate in the ones that I've developed and they're able to immerse themselves in our technology to fully appreciate the Tanium platform. So tell us about the, the numbers this year. How many teams did we have? What were the, what were the scores? Those types of details. So this year we had 247 people comprised of 81 teams from 21 countries. This was both a physical and virtual event. There were people in this room this year doing Capture the Flag, as well as people around the world, 21 countries participating. Wow. The team that won managed to get 19,240 points. The maximum points available was 20,040 points. It was very competitive in the top 10, and it usually always is. Uh, very competitive at the top but it's not just about the standings it's about what you got out of it again it's gamification there's some there's some extrinsic value there and allows the participants to appreciate and learn in a fun manner it can also be used as team building People that have met, never met each other, that work in the same organization, start communicating, breaking barriers, etc. So clearly we have some quite advanced practitioners in the field of cybersecurity who participate each year and claim that first place, second place, third place. What would you say to, yeah, but you mentioned there are people who are beginners as well, and in this field there are very many people just coming in to learn and grow in cybersecurity. This sounds like a good opportunity for them. And so I'm just thinking that it would be intimidating for beginners to come into something with such a high level of expertise in the in the top echelon of the winners. What would you say to people that you would encourage to participate who are just starting? I would say that the best way to learn it is to get into the deep end. And I've seen that throughout the years. To learn something, it doesn't matter what it is. To get yourselves in the deep end and keep an open mind and you'll be absolutely fine. It can feel that it's intimidating. These people are very, very competitive and they're able to, you can see their trajectory in terms of how quickly they're able to solve puzzles. But again, they started somewhere as well. So you have to start somewhere. It might feel that it's intimidating, but you have to start somewhere 
and use that as a barometer to work out, ah, okay, this year I was able to get X, next year I'll be able to get Y. So this year, you added a new component, the escape room challenge for, uh, I, I'll say the details for you, but uh, tell us about this next level competition this year. So for the past few years, I realized that at the upper end of uh, standings, it's, it's very competitive. In some cases, it's, there's draws, We've had instances where literally we've got about 20 minutes out and we still don't know who's going to win. I realised that, that there's an opportunity for me to create expert level content for those individuals. So more of a, a tournament. So on Monday we had the CTF, four hours the top five teams from the CTF will then enter the escape room. And the escape room, there are five rooms, hallways, so, and 24 challenges, puzzles that they need to figure out. And again, the categories are, are related to identifying an unmanaged system and gaining control of said system to determine the initial infection, quarantine windows and Linux systems, decode an encoded message the adversary left on the compromised system, investigate numerous anti-forensic techniques on Linux systems, create a sensor to extract interesting artifacts, remediate all the artifacts the adversary left behind, dynamic malware analysis, and a few fun ones, playing chess to get checkmate on the next move. I think about all the technical opportunities for people to participate at Converge, the hands-on labs, the certification, and as a someone who designed hands-on labs in the past, I know that it took us a solid month of work at least in addition to all the other preparations to build those labs. I can only imagine the complexity of creating these challenges. How long do you spend preparing for this as the, as the mastermind designing these challenges? How long does that take you? It doesn't take me as long as one would expect. So I start, I start drafting you know, specific scenarios in my mind and then write them down. So as soon as Converge ends, I'm already thinking about the next event, which will be in July, which will be the Global Summer CTF. I already have a, a design in place. I know what I'm going to be executing. It typically takes about, about two to three months so for the Converge one, I started in, started in August and we have a delivery in, in November. And it goes through a rigorous process, so I don't just create the content and everyone sees it for the first time. It goes through a rigorous quality assurance to ensure that the content is sound We have a QA process. Once we've confirmed that everything is good to go, then we go live in production. Um, is there anything else that you want people to know about Capture the Flag and why they should participate in future years? I would say that with anything in life, to get really good at something, one needs to have certain certain skill sets. I would say for people that have never done a CTF or curious to know what it is, come with an open mind. Don't feel intimidated by all the noise and you know the standings, etc. And have an objective. You have an objective that 
you'd like to learn about X or Y or Z. And with that in mind, use that as a way for you to assess where you are you know, in six months or one year, one and a half years, two years, which allows you to be able to see your trajectory that you started off here two years ago, now you're at this point. Hmm. Very good. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. I know many security professionals prefer not to be on camera. I thank you for agreeing to this time here at the close of Converge this year. We're recording this right before the escape room starts. So uh, our creator here has taken time uh, as he's been preparing for this uh, to, to share with you what you can expect and how you can grow through this challenge. So thank you again very much for agreeing to this interview. And for you who are looking at the global challenge that we've offered in the summer, Converge again next year. When you see Capture the Flag CTF on the agenda, now you know what it is and now you can sign up for it. So thank you for those who have participated and uh, we hope that this has been uh, an encouraging experience for you and helping you to grow in the craft that helps us defend the world against adversaries. Until next time, go Tanium. <laughs>